Check it out. Some shizzle came in for the Mark II. Got our little distributor tied down. B&M ratchet shifter. Brackets for the power brake booster. Nice aluminum tranny pan because the stock ones always leak. What else we got? Alternator brackets. Fuel line. I highly recommend this stuff. It's great. It's not that expensive. I get the Summit brand. And then we got power steering pump bracket. I like that design. It's just that one piece. Super simple. Yes. Let's get to work today. The name of the game today is to install as many components into the engine on the Mark II back there. Now what we got here is a, an MSD a Pro Built Distributor. This is their all black series, which I think is pretty rad looking. I'm digging that a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to stab this into the engine. Uh, here's the old HEI. They're very big and the guy who sold me this uh, didn't even tell me the ignition module wasn't on there anymore. So. We're just going to start from scratch. Now, to begin with, these are usually set up for a flat tappet cam. A flat tappet cam has a different kind of uh, metal, and you need to make sure that this uh, gear here is for a flat tappet. If we had a roller cam, we would have to knock that uh, roll pin out and put in one for a roller cam. So just keep that in mind. Uh, make sure that you use the gasket here, otherwise you will get oil leak. Here's the old one here. It's kind of like a paper ring. Now to do this, you want a spark plug socket because you're going to have to pull the plug on the number one cylinder. I take a couple extensions with the wobble head. These are snap-ons. This is great for those tight areas because I put the headers on before I pull the plugs out. Uh, you need a breaker bar because you're going to turn the engine over because we're going to have to time it before we drop this distributor in. And then I've just got my uh, great neck set of uh, sockets. I believe the harmonic balancer is a 5 8 because you're going to be using this breaker bar to turn the engine. Before we can put the distributor inside the engine, we're going to have to set it up for what we like. Uh, there are two different things you can really change on here. We've got the, uh, uh, the mechanical uh, timing. It has two springs in it. Depending on which springs you put on there will determine how fast the timing curve ramps up. From the factory on these things, they come with the two heavy springs. If you look over here on in the instructions, this is basically what they've got us set up for. They've got the blue advanced stop bushing, and they put the heaviest springs in here so that we have this slow ramp. Now, this is just a safety precaution, so somebody doesn't just take this out of the box. It's all set up for quick uh, advance and this and that, and they put it in their engine, and they have uh, serious engine problems from pre-detonation or something like that. So they set it on the safe side. Uh, now because this is a large vehicle being a truck and I am going to be doing some pulling, uh, I don't want to go too crazy, but I've got lower compression because uh, it's just a street engine. I'm going to do a lot of street driving, uh, this and that, so I'm going to probably be somewhere, probably somewhere in, in the middle to the faster. I don't want to go completely fast. And if you look here on the instructions, it's going to show you here's uh, two silver lights. See how quick it ramps up? into your, uh, the, the heavies. I'm probably going to want something in the range of over here. Now on the next page on the instructions they're going to show you uh, they've included these different bushings and each bushing has a different amount of full advance. Now in a small block Chevy you're going to have anywhere from uh, 12 to 18 degrees of initial timing. So you want to take that number and add this. Now from the factory we've got 21 I'm probably going to be somewhere around 14 to 15 degrees of initial. Uh, so that will combine to about 35 to 36, which is about where you want your total uh, timing on a street small block Chevy. So we're going to leave the bushing from the factory how it is. And uh, we're going to take this uh, cap off with these two Phillips and under here will be the springs. So let's take a look. All right, <clears throat> All right I've got the cap off and you can see our, our weights here. Now as the distributor starts spinning faster and faster, these weights are going to come out. And depending on how fast they come out is because of these springs. Now look at the charts for the two silver lights and you can see that the uh, advance starts building even before 1000 RPMs. This is about where I'm going to be idling at. So essentially it's going to start wanting to build timing right at idle. That's just too fast for me. What I'm going to do is one light silver and one blue light 
and you can see how it, it takes a little bit longer. We're looking uh, probably about 1250 and then it ramps up a little fast then it, it uh, slows down just a smidge. And here you can see the blue at 21 degrees. So we'll have it in a total, like I said, about 35 to 36. So let's go ahead and swap. All right, I've taken out the two heavy springs and I put in one light uh, blue and one light silver. They're a lot easier now. Uh, make sure when you're taking the springs out, I used uh, just a 90 degree pick. Uh, don't lose this little uh, spacer here. Make sure you keep that bushing there, they will come right off. Uh, there's just, you just pop it on right there on uh, each end. It doesn't matter which way the spring goes or if blue's over here or whatnot. So we're good to, get, good to go now to put this in the end. Also, don't forget, uh, MSD has been so kind to include uh, this break-in lube. You want to just basically take the stuff out, get it all over that distributor gear because it's a fresh part, it's totally dry. You want to make sure it's lubricated when we first fire up our engine. Alright guys, now we're over to the engine. Now, uh, before we put the distributor in, we need to have this engine at top dead center. Number one cylinder. And I don't know if you know this or not, there's a little trick. Look for the head that's more far forward. That's going to be the number one cylinder. I think on a... No, I think Ford's still over here, but... If, say, this head were out over here on this side, then we would know number one's on this side. So here we have the intake and exhaust valve. We know which one's which because we got exhaust lining up with the header and intake lining up with this runner here. So what you're going to see when you're turning it over with your breaker bar, this bolt in here is a uh, 5 eighths. What you're going to see is as you're going over, what you want to look for is the intake valve opening. This rocker is going to go like this, this uh, spring is going to push down, and then it's going to come up. When it comes up and closes, that means the piston is now on its way because it wants to compress the air. And um, what you want to do, I'm going to get the screwdriver here. You're going to take the number one spark plug out and you're going to stick this screwdriver in there. And as you're turning with the breaker bar, you're going to see this screwdriver come up and up, and you want to stop it. When the screwdriver is done moving, that's when you know the piston's at top dead center. So we saw the intake valve go down and come up and close. And then we got the piston that came all the way up. And we can verify it because the timing mark, even though there's no, uh, there's no uh, timing pointer here installed in here, but typically it's either going to be here or maybe up here in the middle on a Chevy. So we got the mark generally about where they are. Piston's up at the top intake valve opened and closed so now we're going to drop in the distributor now before you drop this distributor in uh, you see the slot here this slot correlates with the uh, oil pump uh, this is the uh, male end there'll be a female end on the oil pump those two have to line up for the distributor to fully drop it in uh, what's a good idea get a long flathead screwdriver sticking down that hole use a flashlight you'll be able to see and just turn it, uh, the slot, uh, approximately where that's going to be. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it definitely helps getting the distributor to drop in all over. All right, with our engine at top dead center number one, we're going to go ahead and drop this distributor in. Now, if you're setting it up, especially if you're building your own uh, spark plug wires, uh, you cut them to length and put them together, you can pretty much put your pointer anywhere you want. But typically on a small block Chevy, you're going to be... Somewhere around here, when they get this thing dropped down all the way. Don't forget your gasket. And when you turn it, because of the way the gears are cut, this is going to rotate as you drop it. In. See that? Now it's not down all the way, so you just got to keep working it. Alright, the distributor is dropped in exactly where we want it. Uh, it's not quite centered up, it's going to be a little kick towards the driver's side. Uh, and I wanted the housing this way because we want our plug to come over here to the ignition box, which I've had sitting around. Uh, it was an, another project that never got used, so this is basically a freebie. Can't complain with free. Uh, next, I'm going to be putting the clamp to hold this down. And uh, now, if we have everything set up perfectly, that means we're at zero degrees because we haven't put any advance in. Now, we know the distributor turns. Uh, clockwise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the housing and move it counterclockwise and that'll set us up for some initial timing hopefully in the in somewhere around the 10 to 20 degree range and that'll help us uh, help fire this engine up quicker. 